induces us to work for the food that perishes. That's why we work 12-hour days. That's why you neglect your family. That's why so many people have gotten in trouble because of materialism. And this beautiful gospel that has been chosen for us for today. I was told that I could read here the very familiar Christmas Gospels. But I, I said, you know, the Lord has something better prepared for us. And that is that the very Gospel that is chosen for this day. And that's John chapter 6. This is John chapter 6 when Jesus says, I am the bread of life. And we are in the very place where Jesus came down and became the bread of for us, Bethlehem, house of bread in Hebrew. And then in Arabic, what does it mean? House of flesh. Isn't that what we believe as Roman Catholics? As Catholics, we believe that it's the real flesh that we consume of Jesus. In fact, the, the early Christians were criticized and imprisoned and killed because they were accused. The number one accusation of the early Christians was that they were cannibals because at their meetings, they talked about eating flesh. And that's what Jesus says, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, you shall not have life within you. And what happened when Jesus gave this teaching? In John chapter 6, the Bible says, many of His disciples left Him. What verse is that in John chapter 6? This is John chapter 6. What verse is that? Chapter 6. That after Jesus gives this teaching, that I am the bread of life, and unless you eat this bread, you will not have life within you. The verse that says, and after Jesus taught them this, many left, is John chapter 6, verse 66. John 6, 6, 6. Under the influence of the devil. Under the influence of the devil. And so many times in our own life, we can be influenced by the devil to place material things over spiritual things. And you are testifying with your presence here today. Many of you, you know, you went through great strives to be here because, you know, you, you, you work, your lawyers, your doctors, your professionals, business people. You, you've had to make a lot of rearrangements to be here. Others of you are taking great financial hits by being here. Don't let those, think, those thoughts, you know, that, oh, you know, I spend this much money. And, 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 um, don't let all of that destroy the experience here. Don't, don't allow the material stuff to, to come in. You know, as long as we have the Lord in our lives, we have everything. We have it all. And we have all been given so very much in our lives materially. We lack for very little materially. And yet, we lack for so much spiritually for which we pray here today that the Lord may continue to nourish us with His body and blood as He always does to give us His life from this altar. One other point that I would like to make because we are in the shepherd's field and that is that the shepherds 
were the lowest of the low. Uneducated people. <coughs> and yet, they were the first to come and adore the Lord. And worship Him. And do Him homage. You don't have to be well educated, sophisticated, in order to have that which it takes to make the Lord number one in our lives. All you need is humility. Jesus, what did he do? in order to become the bread for us, the flesh for us, what did Jesus do? Let me show you what he did. Jesus did what? He came He came down, right? Jesus came down from heaven. He abandoned the throne of heaven and took the throne of a manger with animals. He abandoned his throne. He came down. He humbled himself. In order for us to go up, we have to come down in your life. Maybe you have to come down, you know, in order to make peace with your spouse or with your brothers and your sisters or with your children or with your co-workers. You may not know why you have to ask them for forgiveness, but do it. If anything, the Lord teaches us that he exalts the humble and lifts up the humble. So we pray today here for the humility that we all need in our lives to live in peace. We are in the land that needs peace. But more so we all need peace in our lives, in our families, in our churches, in your workplace in your relationships, in your marriage. That can only happen if you do what the Prince of Peace did. Come down. So we pray for that grace today. The grace to humble ourselves in imitation of the one who first humbled himself for us. Let us think of all those times in our lives right now that we need humility. All those people that you need to ask forgiveness from. We pray for that grace in our lives as we stand and make our prayers to the Lord. Pope Francis and all those who lead the church for the patriarch for the patriarch and all the leaders here in the Holy Land all those who work here we pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayers. and we pray for our government leaders especially our president our legislators we pray for all those who suffer from political turmoil and from this power-hungry world. Especially we think of the people in Venezuela who are suffering so much because of the power-hungry politicians there. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And we pray for our own families that we may continue to have 
always the gift of humility in our families, particularly in your marriages. with your children. Think of their names right now, your kids who are back home, your grandchildren, your in-laws, your, your daughter-in-laws, your son-in-laws, your mother-in-laws. Pray for them, your co-workers, your workplace, that humility and peace may reign. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And let us now pray for all those who have gone before us. Your parents, those of you who've lost your parents. Some of you have lost your children or your spouse. For the eternal rest of the Lord for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for all the prayers that you brought here on this pilgrimage, that the Lord may transform them and in His time answer your needs always through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us have our offertory hymn. 